Okay. So thank you for hopping on. Um, it's great to see a lot of you. Um, I haven't seen you guys in about two or three weeks and I hope everything is going well. Um, I know we've got a handful that are missing and that's gonna kind of jump me off just to our first point in the sense of, you know, we plan on meeting as a team throughout the summer. You know, it's something that when COVID hit us last year, it kept us together. Um, it kept us in communication. We were able to update you guys on everything, but also helped us as a team a lot. Um, and that comes from me and the rest of the staff in the sense of we really believe that it was better, beneficial for all of us to do that. And so um, I sent out a survey about a week ago um, asking people to send me when they can do meetings, um, what works best for them and all that stuff. And out of the possible 37 servers and divers we've got coming next year or coming back next year, um, I've heard from 17 of you. And so, you know, that's less than half. And so it's really hard for us to kind of plan stuff for the team or plan stuff around people, those schedules and everything else if I don't hear from you guys. So I'm gonna be sending out the survey link again. Please get that done so that we can actually have a good time to meet for most of the summer. We can have as many people there as we can. Um, it's just gonna really help us stay true to what we need to do, especially in the second week of June, we're gonna be officially bringing or adding on our incoming class to the meetings as well. And they're gonna be a part of everything. And so please do that survey by tomorrow if you guys um, have not done it yet. It's just going to help me know everyone's schedules for the summer. Um, and that way we can kind of just plan as a staff when we're going to have our team meetings and how we're going to map out the summer in the sense of different workshops or things we want to do that um, we've already started to plan for you guys. So make sure you guys get that done um, and help us with that so we can plan ahead for the rest of the summer. Um, I know Brian sent it out, I think either yesterday or today, about updating him on the vaccines. Please do that, as that's the only way that we can verify what programs are vaccinated, who still needs to get vaccinated, who is not vaccinated. And, um, you know, it's going to get to a point where, as you guys have already kind of seen in some cities like Chicago, where they're talking about a vaccine passport or a vax pass or things like that. And that's how things are going to kind of run this next year. Um, and as our university and our chief of medicine starts talking about rules and protocols of what programs are going to have to follow, including our swim team, it's all going to depend on who is vaccinated, who's not vaccinated, and how we're able to officially run things. Um, what I can tell you from just what I've seen so far and what my recommendation is, is that you get the vaccine. Um, and don't wait to get it. The sooner, the better. Um, because it's really going to come down to the people who have the vaccination are going to be able to be a lot more flexible in the way they're able to do things this coming school year than the people who don't get it. Um, and that goes with not just having to quarantine when you come back to campus or things like that, or not having a quarantine if you have the vaccination. But if someone in a common area test positive, how that's going to you know, affect things or how we're going to be able to travel or what we're going to be able to do as a team. Um, I can tell you this much, the teams that are 100% fully vaccinated are going to be able to kind of go back to a lot of the normal things that they have in the past. But if we've got people on the team who aren't vaccinated, it's going to make things trickier. We're going to all have to wear masks still. We're all going to have to not have in-person meetings and stay to Zoom. We're not gonna be able to travel the way that we normally do or do different things like that. And so if you've got issues about it, if you have questions about it, if it's a personal reason why, things like that, please talk to one of the coaches about it. Or if you don't wanna to talk to us about it, please talk to Brian or one of the athletic trainers so we can get an understanding on things. Some of you guys, I know it's just signing up. Here's the thing, in the Chicagoland area, you don't even need to schedule it anymore. <clears throat> You're going to show up and get it done. It's super easy to do. And so please take the time. Please schedule it out. 
as we're gonna get to a point where we're gonna be asking everyone to kind of show proof of their vaccination. So as we plan things in the facility or as renters start coming back in or anything like that, a lot of it's gonna depend on how our program is vaccinated or who still needs to get their shots and everything else. So let's make sure that we take care of all those things um, sooner than later. Are there any questions about, you know, the vaccinations or anything having to do with that? Cool. As for right now, those who are on campus, please continue to testing. Um, I know the hours are a little different over at Student Center East, but <coughs> please stay up with those. Um, once we get past Memorial Day, they'll start to offer more testing over here at PEB in one of the back racquetball courts uh, in the mornings that will go along with practice schedules and things like that. So that'll help us out, but they are asking still people, even if they've been vaccinated, to continue to test um, as they kind of relook at it all. And the hope is, is that by this summer, we'll either be down to one test a week or for those who are vaccinated, zero tests a week. But right now we are still very much testing twice a week if you're here around campus or using any of the facilities on campus, as well as um, wearing your masks as you walk around campus and, and those kind of things. So um, that's what we're doing right now. The CDC or things might say it's different, but that's what we're trying to stick to with what we've got going on, okay? Tim, um, what should we do if we work during all of the testing hours? That's what we're working on right now. More than likely, we'll have to figure out a time that you'll have to get tested separately because their first thing was, well, then that person can't use the facilities, but we're trying to work with them right now to figure that out. Um, next thing, uh, so we've officially got everyone's uh, grades back. And, uh, you know, first I wanna start with some congratulations on a really good semester. This was our third semester doing some form of online or hybrid work. <coughs> and we did a really good job. Um, the men's team finished up with a GPA of a 3.41 with a cumulative GPA of a 3.40. Uh, we had five guys with 4.0s for the semester. Um, we also have 11 that will be on the Horizon League Honor Student Athlete list and 12 that will be represented on the Dean's list uh, this semester. For the women's team, uh, they finished with a spring semester uh, GPA of a 358, um, as well as a cumulative GPA of a 348. Uh, we had nine women in the program that finished with 4.0s for this semester. Um, we also had 15 that will be represented with Horizon League honors, as well as 20 uh, that will be Dean's List recipients for the semester, um, which is pretty exciting because I believe there's 100 student athletes total that will be on the Dean's List this spring semester. And our program alone makes up a third of those student athletes. So we did a really good job with that. Now, moving into this fall for this next year, um, I can tell you right now the conversations that are going on across campus that we're hearing from a lot of the different administration and everything is that um, the whole credit, no credit thing for the D's and F's um, will not be going on anymore. Uh, you will be getting uh, a D or an F. It will be going against your GPA starting next fall. Um, and I can tell you this much as excited that we were about all the grades that we got. If there wasn't the credit, no credit situation going on, we would have had five, possibly six people becoming eligible for the fall next year between both programs. <clears throat> to give you an idea, in my last three years of coaching, I've had three people total becoming eligible. We would have doubled it in one semester this spring. So there's a lot of things that we're going to have to keep a tight ship on that we're really going to be overseeing and working with the port center on. Um, 
Port hours will be coming back this fall, study hours. Um, it's just something that we're going to be able to start doing as things start to open up. Um, so it will be for the incoming class, but also it'll be for the people um, who academically we feel will need to be doing the port hours and meeting with the advisors on a regular basis. This will not be based on what your GPA was this spring. It'll be based on what your GPA would have been this spring without the credit, no credit. Um, so we've got some people who with the credit, no credit, have got above a 3.0, who wouldn't have even been above a 2.0 if it wasn't for the credit, no credit. So it's just things that we've got to stay on top of. It's things that as a program, eligibility stuff can really hurt programs in the way that they're able to do things. And so to have five, possibly six people that we would have missed for a whole semester of competition um, really could have affected our program. And so it's just something we need to stay on top of as we go back. Um, and the chancellor said it last week, I believe, or two weeks ago in a meeting, his expectation is that we will be fully in person for classes this fall semester. Um, and so as we get back to that level of class load and in that level of participation in courses, we need to make sure we stay on top of it because not just for our incoming class, but for our current class, that's going to be our rising sophomores. This will be your first full school year in the sense of having all your classes in person and dealing with that and, and learning how to manage what you're doing uh, with a full swim schedule as well. Um, and so <clears throat> right now, we can uh, take a back seat. We can enjoy the amazing team GPAs that we had. We can enjoy the 14 4.0s that we've had and the countless other awards that we've done because this is our seventh year in a row that we will finish as a scholar All-American program. Um, and that's the longest stretch this university has ever had for swimming and diving. Um, it's something that I'm very, very proud of. And as much as I'm trying to focus on how we can always get better, how can we always do things more, I am sitting back and I was extremely thrilled on Friday to see that number one, no one is inel ineligible moving forward. And number two, um, we did extremely well as a program through this year in the way we've handled a lot of our classes. We'll always look to get better, but I wanna thank you guys for staying on top of it. I wanna thank those of you who got the 4.0s, got the Dean's List and the honor rolls and everything else for being unbelievable representatives to us. <clears throat> and as a program, you know, again, we're kind of raising the bar for the department in the sense of, you know, what the expectation is for uh, excellence in that. So awesome job for you guys on that. And um, just an amazing work that you guys have done. Um, our next thing kind of looking into it. And as we talk about it, um, we are in the process of finalizing our meet schedule for next year. And I'm going to show this with you guys briefly as this is probably the earliest I've ever shown a meet schedule for next year. We still have some things that aren't finalized yet, so they're not on there. But with myself being the chair of our sport for the conference, um, I've already been a part of a few meetings and they are very much ready for us to have a full season next year. That means with us officially starting training in September, starting meets in October and having our conference meet um, in February. So let me just pull it up here real quick. So as you guys can see here, our first meet of the year, we're looking to start it out against uh, Northwestern and University of Illinois. The week after that, we'll have a home meet against Milwaukee. The week after that, we'll be at Oakland. Now, for our, for our mid season invitation, we're looking at a few different options. Our top choice that we wanna stick with is the House of Champions Invitational at IAPUI. It's an amazing facility. It's where conference will be this year. Um, and so we can just get used to it again, being there. Let's be real, we had a pretty good meet there this April. So we like going down there. We also know that we're one of the only Horizon League teams that will be there. So it's gonna be a lot of different teams um, from other different conferences around the country who wanna come swim at a fast pool. 
So right now they're looking at either having it the weekend before Thanksgiving or the weekend after Thanksgiving. Now, normally we do our invites always before Thanksgiving. Um, we try to stay away from after Thanksgiving because that kind of runs into our uh, reading week and final schedule. <laughs> they have to wait on the approval from the natatorium itself because obviously the natatorium does a lot of uh, international national competitions and they have to wait to see how what's going to everything going to look like after the post Olympics this summer and what kind of competitions will be going on in the fall. So we're going to be working with them closely. We have a few other invitationals that we're looking at. Um, but if it's moved to December, we'll kind of have to reconsider it and see if that's going to be our best option. Our hope is, is that they'll keep it the weekend before Thanksgiving, as that's just kind of where we like to keep it as a program. So then once we finish up Thanksgiving, we can focus on uh, finals and everything else. Um, in January, the weekend before school starts up again, we'll have a two day meet here at our facility with Cleveland State and IEPUI. The weekend after that, we'll have back-to-back -back days and meets again. Uh, Friday night, we'll have Southern Illinois here. And then um, Saturday, we'll have Green Bay here. And that'll be our senior day. Uh, two weeks later, we'll be at University of Chicago for a meet. And then the weekend after that, our diving team will have their invite here um, that Saturday. <clears throat> the championships are planned for February 16th to the 19th. And those will be at IEPUI next year again as well. So this is what we have planned so far. Next week, this could all change, but this is what we've been planning on. This is what we've been budgeting for. This is what we're working towards um, for those kind of things. As these get confirmed and get approved, I'll start to add in some of our other dates pertaining to the red versus blue meet, our recruiting weekends as we're starting visits up again, um, and just other things that are going on in the sense of the first day of school, the first day of official practice, anything else that we have kind of during the year that we're going to be looking at. Um, one of the things you don't see on there right now is training trip. And that's because as of right now, we don't know if we're going to be doing, able to do training trip again next year, just due to the COVID process. So um, that's something that we're probably not going to know more of until July. Um, but we're holding off on that until we get a little bit more of an understanding from our university on things that are going to be allowed next year um, and things that we're going to be holding off on. You know, obviously our number one priority is having as full of a season as possible with competitions and the championships and everything else. Um, so we'll just kind of have to work towards um, the rest of it as it kind of comes and as we start to understand from our university administration on what we're going to be able to do and not do pertaining to the next year with that. Uh, with the recruiting stuff, uh, I want to thank um, Anna, Jess, Matt, and Felix for hopping on yesterday with our recruits. We had five recruits on a call yesterday um, from all over the country just to kind of learn a little bit more about what we've got going on. Next Monday, we're going to have another open house at seven o'clock at night, uh, which for our kids on the team who help us out, uh, that means that they'll be helping us out from around 740 to about eight o'clock, 815. Um, I know we've got a lot more signed up for that date. Um, I want to say I think we're up to about 12 or 15 recruits for that call. Um, if you can help with that, please reach out to Ashley, because the more people they can meet, the better. Uh, and we always want a mix of male, female, in-state, out-of-state, just a whole mix of things, swimmers and divers, um, as these are all class of 2022 kids, so kids who will be signing starting next fall. Um, with the recruiting stuff, they're going to start allowing in-person recruiting June 1st. So that means kids coming to visit campus, kids being able to take visits, us as coaches being able to go back out on the road and working with kids. So things are going to start to change. We're starting to come out with protocols on how official visits will work. They're going to look different next year or this coming year, but we're going to be having them again. So it's just things to kind of update you guys on what we're working on and how everything's going with that kind of stuff with that. So <clears throat> that's where we're at with those things. Um, the last main thing I've got, and uh, after I finish this up, I'll open it up for questions. And then I'm going to ask for the people who are planning on staying here this summer, 
in training with us, whether it's swimming or diving, stay on. For everyone else who's at home, you can sign off after this last point, um, but we just need to talk about some stuff for people who are staying here this summer. Um, so the last thing is, um, when I met with a lot of you guys towards the end of the year, I've talked about one-on-one -on -one meetings. We will be starting those up. And the first round of one-on-one -on -one meetings will be with our people who are staying at home all summer or, or, or off campus and not training with us um, this summer. And we want these one-on-one -on -one meetings. They're gonna be brief. They're not gonna go super long. But we want check-ins throughout the summer just to see how things are going, how training's going, if issues arise, what can we help with. But then if there's certain things that we need you to do over the summer or there's paperwork that's being sent your way from the NCAA or whatever else, just to kind of keep things in check. Um, I have learned through the good years and the bad years with this program in the sense of you know success and unsuccessful seasons, the more we're able to communicate, the more we're able to stay in touch in the off season, the more successful of a year we're gonna have. There's just no question about it. And what I can tell you this much is, is if you're part of this program and you've made a commitment to being a division one athlete, this isn't just a season only type of thing. This is a year round sport, whether it's swimming or diving, it's a year round commitment to what we're doing. And the training aspect of it over the summer, even though we can't absolutely force you to do things, it's going to be expected. And after a year that we have, the last thing I want us to do is take our foot off the gas and think, hey, we did good enough. That was great. We don't need to keep going and moving forward. You know, the reason why we've had the success we've had the last two years is because we had a rough year and we wanted to change it. <clears throat> just because we've done a lot of the changing now doesn't mean that we don't stop. We've got to keep pushing forward. And with a conference like ours, it's whoever can make the difference in the changes in the off season is going to get ahead during the season. Because every team during the season is going to train and work hard and do all those kind of things. And that's great. But it's the ones who decide to make a commitment over the summer. And I get it. As you get longer in your college experience and more into, you know, your upper class years and all that, you've got other commitments come up. You've got internships. You've got this. You've got that. But I guarantee we can all make time for something. We can all make time in our days to find a way to get better with what we need to do. And that's what I'm asking for you guys this summer. And so when we're checking in with you, this is not a policing in the sense of putting a, you know, gold star or an X next to your name and what you guys are doing. It's very much the open and honest conversation of, yep, I'm training, it's going well. I'm struggling, I'm not training as much as I should, or I'm just having a hard time getting back into it. Because <coughs> having those conversations are gonna make the biggest difference this year. And that's what we need to look to do and change. And so I'm gonna ask you guys for that this summer because that's also gonna help us set the tone for all the incoming kids that we have. This year and the success we have, I don't want it to be a one and done type of thing. I don't want just the one trophy that's you know behind me right now. I want more success for this program. I want more people to get best times. I want more people to feel that they've had successful seasons. But we can't wait until September or October to do that. We got to start it now. And that's one of the reasons why we want to plan to have team meetings in the summer. It's one of the reasons why we want to, as, as staff, to plan workshops with you guys to help you guys get better and be there for you guys during this time. So if you're looking at it now, five weeks after conference and you still haven't gotten your butt back into training or anything else, this is the wake up call to do it now. Because all the science, all the research shows, especially for our sport, anything longer than two weeks of not training or stuff like that, you're moving in the wrong direction of becoming successful. And I know there's some of you saying, well, I'm lifting, so I'm okay, or I'm doing some runs and that's okay. Nothing beats being in the water. So let's make sure we stay on top of that. I will be sending a link out tomorrow uh, for sign up times and this round of signups will be for the people who are just staying at home for this summer. The people who are here this summer and training with us, you'll be the next round of signups. And the hope is, is that we can meet with you guys about every two to three weeks throughout the summer 
So we have these constant check-ins to make sure everything's going right. Okay, but for everyone here in the team, there's two things that I need you guys to do in the next few days. Number one, sign up for these one-on-one -on -one meetings with me. Number two, if you haven't done the survey yet of when you can be available for team meeting times, go back, get the link and fill it out. If your work schedules or anything else have changed, go back, refill out the survey because the most up, in, most up to date information that we have is gonna help us plan then what's gonna be best for what we need to do as a team, all right? And I can only do that with your guys' help. So with only 17 people doing the survey and 20 of you I still need it from, let's have that number drastically different by tomorrow, all right? All right, guys, any questions about anything before um, I just ask the people who are staying here this summer to stay on? Uh, Tim, I just have a quick question. Yep. Um, I know how you said classes are all going to be in person. I don't know if you know the specifics of this, but um, they did say that classes over 100 people would still be hybrids. Is that true or is that has, been, has that been like lifted since? It's my guess is that's going to be lifted because okay. everything is about moving forward with what they're trying to do. Okay. Um, also, just kind of not a question, quick and just a quick kind of reminder for the women. Um, the message I sent out in the women's group me, if you still don't have a name tag, make sure you like that and like, like it by tonight so I can get that list out tomorrow morning to my mom so we can get them hopefully here by June or July. Cool. Any other questions? Also, just a reminder, everybody, uh, to make sure you update your COVID information, your vaccine information with Brian. Yeah. Thank you. Um, please, please do that, guys. Uh, all you got to do is to send Brian a message and group me saying, hey, I got it done. Okay. All right, guys. For those of you who are not staying here this summer, you can log off. Thank you. Miss you. Appreciate you. See you guys later. For everyone else who's staying here this summer, just stay on for a little bit. All right, guys. Um, so we are kind of finalizing some things with the schedules and all that stuff. This week and next week are going to be very much kind of, I know people are still coming back to campus and getting situated and all those kind of things. And, you know, that's fine. I wanted some people to go home after finals, you know, see your families, get all that stuff situated. I know some of you guys are still figuring out your work schedule and all that. Great. Um, keep us posted on those work schedules and if you start to get those things you know a lot of you guys when i met with you a few weeks ago well when am i on my work schedule well i know some of you guys have started work and haven't sent me your work schedule so please send me your work schedule so we have that so we know it because that'll help us with the practice schedule that's going on right now the university is looking at bringing some of the renters back into the big pool starting june 1st <clears throat> and they still want us to kind of keep our bubble with COVID and everything like that so the more of a full schedule I have with work schedules, the easier it's going to make it. Fun. So all it's got to be is a text, email, whatever, but send me your work schedules because that's going to help me kind of stay in the loop of what availability do we have for practices and how we can make everything work as we kind of go through it, okay? Um, with the weight room, I know Nick Sestatis, the head strength coach, sent out an email about a week or so ago about everyone's availabilities for the weight room, the times during the day and everything like that. Um, as we're kind of looking at a few different options and some of it is the weight room still waiting on some COVID protocol approval for the summer, but also there are certain sports in the NCAA where they allow full team training. And so the teams are mandated to be here over the summer and have training camps for a few weeks and have to stay on campus and all that kind of stuff. And so <clears throat> because of that, they get some priority with the weight room because they're mandated by the NCAA to have actual practice. Um, and so we're working with Eric and the strength staff to figure out their time and then figure out what times will be best for you guys. Now, Nick has offered for you guys in the email he sent out to everyone, um, to put in there about, hey, what times of the day does the weight room work for you and all those kind of things. And I know they're looking at a lot of different options in the sense of what times of the day can it work for our athletes because 
for example, if we're unable to do a full team lift every morning or the mornings that we're planning on, then they're going to have it where they're going to have a link that you guys can click on and then sign up for time to be able to go to the weight room throughout the week and have it where you and a partner will have a rack together and be able to get your lift ins and all those kind of things. Um, I know he has gotten a handful of you guys who have sent it back and I appreciate that. For the rest of you, take a look at it. Um, just search Nick Z uh, in your emails and I guarantee it'll pop up. Um, and if it hasn't, let Eric know and he'll kind of work with them. But they're trying to give you guys as much opportunity as possible. Because as I wrote earlier in the week, um, if you're not taking summer class at USC this summer, your iCard will not work at the rec for your lifts. And as your coach and the training we're trying to do here, the priority would be to have you lift with our coaches here at UIC before you guys just decide to go over to the rec. It'd be the same thing like swim practice. Obviously, I would much rather have you swim with us than you just go into the rec and swimming there. And so we want to make sure that we're going to make it work. And I'm going to, as I finish up the meetings with the people who are at home, I'm going to start meeting with all of you one-on-one -on -one to say, okay, what's the work schedule looking like? How's your training schedule? What are you able to do with weights? And what's the plan for that? Um, because if you're not able to make the weight room and you're not in classes, the summer membership is 55 bucks for the summer to be able to use the rec facility. And so we're going to have a few different options for you guys. But the expectation or the hope is, is that you're going to be able to use the weight room at PEB with Eric and the strength coaches here and your teammates um, and keeping it as much of a team as possible. So whether you're a swimmer or a diver, work with Eric on that, fill that survey out so the strength coaches have an idea of those kind of things because there are a lot of student athletes from other teams who stay here over the summer to try and lift in PEB. And the more they're able to kind of plan those times out, the better it's going to be and help them out with that kind of stuff, okay? All right, I appreciate that. Um, so like I said, the weight room stuff, the link with that, please do that. Um, we'll do one-on-one -on -one meetings after we finish up the one-on-one -on -one meetings with everyone at home. The last thing I've got, and this is something that um, if you hopped on early, you saw I had another guy in my office with me. That's the head of our facilities. We're very much trying to work with him and trying to figure out everything with rentals coming back and that kind of stuff. It's going to make things a lot easier this summer if we have everyone who's staying here this summer um, be vaccinated. And it's just going to be, it's just going to make things a lot simpler. So if you haven't gotten that done, sign up. You can go on your MyChart app sign up for tomorrow morning and get it done right away. You can go to the United Center and literally just drive up and they'll take care of you all day long. Um, if you are someone who doesn't want to get it or is against it or things like that, then let me know. I'm not here to tell you you're right or wrong or whatever else. We just need to know why and we need to talk through it <clears throat> because this is becoming the reality of the situation that we're in. Things as a program, and especially as a large program, are just going to be a lot easier the more of our team that gets vaccinated. And if we have everyone who's staying here um, this summer be vaccinated, it's going to make our jobs as coaches a lot easier, and it's going to make your guys' experience, in my point of view, um, a lot more fun. So just think about that, and again, if you need to get some stuff done or if you've got questions about it, reach out to one of the coaches, let us know, and we'll try and help you guys through that. Um, the last thing I'm bringing up, and this we'll talk a little bit more, or I'll bring it up again once we kind of get past Memorial Day and everyone's back. But the expectation is, is if you're here on campus, you're training with us. Um, because it wears on your teammates, and I have seen this now for seven summers, when they have teammates who are here on campus and decide that they don't want to be a part of what we're doing this summer because they just want to do easy street all summer long. And they feel very let down by it. And I get it and it's tough and I understand people have a lot of different schedules, things like that. But that's why we try to do what we can to help the schedules be set up in your favor. 
because as coaches, and I know Ashley how to hop off, and so or no, she's still here. Um, but and I know Susan and Eric are here, and they can all attest to this. We don't get paid any more for coaching in the summer. In fact, our contracts as coaches and the way we get paid for our careers doesn't have to do with anything of us coaching over the summer or really out of season. We do this solely to help you guys out, to give you guys an opportunity to train, to get an opportunity to be able to get in the facility and stay successful in your sport. I would very much love to have a normal summer where I don't have to be here every single morning or most of the mornings or all that kind of stuff. And I'm still having to do masters right now. So I'm here three days a week at 4.30 in the morning. But it's because I want this program to be successful. And that's why as coaches, we're still here in the summer. We still meet every week in the summer. We still try to help you guys out through the summer. So if you're going to be here during the summer, we're asking you to be, please be respectful of our time. Because we've all seen it. It makes a world of a difference when we have 20 people at practice and when we have three. And so just remember that. I understand that there's going to be points the summer where you're going to have a long weekend because you want to go do something with your family or you've got a trip or things like that. And that's all fine. I want everyone to have that over the summer. But I'm talking about the random Thursday morning or the random Friday morning where half the team doesn't show up because there is one hell of a special at some bar on Taylor Street. Or because they all had too much fun the night before. Or they just don't want to get up and get out of bed. So let's just keep that in mind. And I'm just going to really try not to talk about that as much as we can because the rest of it is I want to enjoy this summer. Because last summer not coaching sucked. Not seeing you guys sucked. Not being able to enjoy the lake and the warm weather and everything else sucked. And I would much rather have it with as big of a group as possible this summer, swimming and diving, than we've ever had before. And we've got a chance to do that this summer. So keep those things in mind. Once I finish up the at home people's one on one stuff, I will send you guys your meeting list. And then again, the vaccination stuff, just let me know. Okay. So that's it, guys. Thank you for staying on tonight. Um, and I'll see you guys all soon, all right? All right.